Gordon, it's Michael K. here in uh, Boston and Don LeGrec in New York. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, Mike. All right, so what's the thought process here? Uh, it seems like the Red Sox have come to uh, the conclusion we're going to operate like a smaller market team because we're not going to get engaged in these bidding wars to get older players on long-term contracts. Is that accurate? Well, it certainly is accurate in the case of pitchers who are north of 30. I mean, they've demonstrated that with, with John Lester. They, they made a low-ball offer in spring training, four years, $70 million, which was roughly half, not even half of what Max Scherzer turned down uh, from the Detroit Tigers, uh, also in spring training. So, you know, the Levinson brothers, Seth and Sam, uh, who are Lester's agents, and, and, and John, they shut down negotiations until after the season. Uh, they, they didn't think uh, uh, the three days over the All-Star break uh, was going to be sufficient time to close that kind of gap. And the Red Sox uh, uh, certainly didn't make any kind of even um, – subtle overtures uh, to to Lester that they were ready to talk uh, a real deal. So they went ahead and traded him. And, and uh, to me, it's just so stunning, as, as you noted. Uh, in, in five days' time, the Red Sox traded away uh, Jake Peavy, Felix Dubron, John Lackey, John Lester, all guys who pitched in last year's World Series. And, and when you look at the history of this team, Michael, and, and see that they won a World Series in 2004, because they got, had guys in Schilling, Martinez, and Lowe on the mound, and they won in 2007, uh, you know, with, with Johnny Lester, Matsuzaka, Josh Beckett, and they won last season with the guys that we just mentioned. It's a pretty remarkable change, of course. When you look at John Lester's Twitter feed, nothing but nice things to say about the Red Sox organization. Do you think he believes that there's still the possibility that he'll be a Red Sox again? No, I don't, Don. I, I think... And it's interesting, it, you know, you, you can talk to people in town um, and they are still hearing from Red Sox ownership, you know, we're going to make a, a serious run at John um, after the season, almost like there's some evil genius involved here, that they flip John now where they don't need him but uh, and, and get a valuable piece like Cespedes and then re-sign him uh, uh, this winter. But I think... Once a guy gets out on, in free agency, uh, the offers are going to be so much beyond what the Red Sox, even if the Red Sox were to come back now this winter with say, five years at $23 million plus or whatever, I think there'll be teams that will easily trump that in free agency. So John may still wish it. I think it's, he has been sincere uh, in, his, in, in his desire, expressed desire to come back to Boston. I believe that is all real and and that's what makes some of this so hard to comprehend that here you've got a homegrown ace and haven't we heard that's the hardest thing to come by in this game a homegrown ace someone who has shown that he can win in boston can win on the biggest stage wants to stay here hasn't caused any problems and he's out I wonder, you know, it sounds like the Red Sox have found religion, and it's hard hard to knock the fact when you see guys like CC Sabathia break down and you, you give seven-year contracts to 30-year-old guys. I get it. But what are the Red Sox religious beliefs going to be when, <laughs> when the Yankees swoop in and offer John Lester a seven-year deal for $150 million or maybe more? Well, we know what, the, what the, the religious beliefs of the fans will be, Michael. They'll be wanting to burn certain people at the stake uh, if that happens. And that's really... Uh, the Boston fans' worst nightmare, that, that John Lester is going to end up in pinstripes. And I think that is a very reasonable possibility, uh, you know, even though they are, I know they are eating a lot of money with Tanaka and Sabathia right now, but I, I've got to think that uh, uh, the Yankees will, will make a run at, at Lester. And, and, you know, it's true. I, I mean, I understand theoretically why John – Henry is is uh, mounting the kind of objections he is to these long-term deals for precisely the reason you cite, you know, that so many of them have blown up on teams uh, like a Sabathia. Uh, even that you, know, you can point at the 10-year deal given uh, to Pujols. You think the Angels would do that again? The flip side of it but is... But unfortunately, it seems like the price of doing business, though, Gordon. Well, I mean, then he can't be in the baseball well, business. Well, there is that, and there's also the fact that there are always outliers uh, to those examples. I, I mean, which pitcher has John Lester been compared to the most throughout his career? A guy named Andy Pettit. Well, the last time I checked, Andy Pettit pitched until he was 40 and was pretty darn effective even in, in the late stages of his career. So, 
Uh, Lester has never had any uh, significant arm issues in his career. He's been extremely durable, and you're right. It is a part of doing business in the game, and, and, and it's almost as if the Red Sox are, are saying, we're going to try to alter the way business is done in this game. Now, the feeling is the fan base is upset. As Michael mentioned before you came on, Red Sox have the highest ticket price in all of Major League Baseball. But how does it affect their bottom line, Gordon? Would people stop going to games? Would Fenway Park ever become a ghost town? Or are they taking advantage of the fact that they'll still get people to go to that ballpark? They'll still get people to watch on Nesson. And so they're using the dedication of the fans almost against them. Well, we'll, we'll certainly not see an impact, uh, 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 the Lester trade impact, anytime soon. You know, they had such a huge sale uh, in the aftermath of winning the World Series. I mean, this week, even with the team playing some of the worst baseball it's played all year, they had their three biggest crowds of the year against the Toronto Blue Jays. So obviously it hasn't impacted the bottom line. The only thing that would impact the bottom line uh, is if the Red Sox were to go into a significant tailspin for, for two, three, four years in a row. And, and that just isn't going to happen uh, under this stewardship. And, and the other thing is, guys, the, the Leicester trade – does have an element of intrigue and excitement to it in the fact that it's not just some nameless uh, prospect known only to the seam heads, but in return they got Joanna Cespedes, uh, a, a guy who who's going to be very entertaining. I called him. He's going to be a powerful anesthetic to help people forget the pain of, of losing Lester because he's a show and a half. Uh, the only thing is, do you win championships by giving up uh, number one pitchers uh, for a guy with a 300 on-base percentage?